Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this uh, class. Uh, today we are going to begin a new uh, chapter on uh, linear uh, estimation. Uh, to motivate the, uh, the content of today's lecture, uh, we're going to consider uh, a, a, a scenario. Imagine we want a robot to self-localize uh, itself in our uh, lab. Here we have depicted uh, in white the trajectory uh, it has to uh, take. The uh, robot, uh, in order to self-navigate, uh, we have to train it uh, to estimate it is a specific location in the room and to make the appropriate uh, forward uh, displacement and uh, left and right uh, turning. Uh, for that matter, we use a, a polar coordinate system uh, to train uh, the robot and to get uh, model uh, statistics. Here, as you can see, uh, okay, you may not uh, be able to see, but there are three different uh, uh, distance measurement uh, systems uh, on board. Uh, the first one is a, 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 a ultra-wide band uh, radio, which uh, uses uh, time of flight uh, to uh, estimate the relative uh, location of the uh, robot. Uh, and then uh, it has also uh, inertial measurement uh, unit, which, is, uh, which does not need any um, infrastructure uh, to estimate the um, linear uh, and angular accelerations, uh, based on which uh, we can estimate the relative displacement in turn of the uh, robot. And in addition, it has also a laser-based estimation uh, system. Each has its own uh, merit and demerit. Uh, our purpose is to find the best estimation uh, mechanism so that by the end of the day, our uh, uh, um, uh, confidence in uh, the relative position of the robot is uh, the best. So the first one the robot should do is to estimate its uh, forward uh, displacement. Uh, we have taken a large uh, amount of data to get statistics pertaining to these three uh, measurement uh, systems. Are they reference to uh, evaluate the, the confidence or how best our estimation is? We have uh, a highly accurate uh, measurement device which is external to the to the robot, as you can see here. This is also a leather-based uh, system. Uh, we do uh, manual uh, measurement from where the, 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 the robot is. We send infrared signal to the uh, nearby uh, reference object. And based on that, we, we do measurement. And uh, we take this uh, measurement as our uh, reference uh, system. So the statistics we get pertaining to these uh, three uh, uh, measurement devices, the uh, uh, UWB-based, inertial, uh, IMU-based, and uh, laser-based system uh, is depicted uh, here. Most of them seems to have, seem to have uh, a normally, uh, normally distributed uh, error with uh, approximately zero mean, but the width of the, the three curves uh, are associated with their corresponding uh, variance. Um, a, a wider uh, width means the samples were dissimilar. Uh, that means uh, our confidence in the measurement system is uh, poor. Uh, the narrower the, the width, uh, the more trustworthy the measurement uh, system is. The one in red you can see is the IMU-based uh, measurement system, which has a large margin uh, of uh, error. Regardless of how unreliable it is, a measurement system can always be useful if it is combined with other measurement system. As we will see later on, um, by the combined effort, uh, our main aim is to reduce the, the overall variance or the overall 
uh, uncertainty. And a good mixing uh, system or a good estimation system is one which yields the smallest um, variance. So having uh, motivated uh, this way, now we're going to go to establish the mathematical basis for linear estimation. Okay, so we begin with the, the, the mathematical uh, or the theoretical uh, foundation for uh, linear estimation. Okay. In, in any estimation assignment, uh, not only for uh, linear estimation, but for any estimation assignment, we have to begin with certain assumptions. Uh, unfortunately, without assumptions, uh, it is impossible to undertake any uh, estimation uh, assignment. Uh, the, the fewer the assumptions, the better is the uh, uh, estimation result, but the more complex will be uh, the mathematical uh, expression. The longer the assumption or the more liberal we are in our uh, assumption, uh, maybe the um, more tractable the mathematical expressions, but the less uh, reliable or the, the poorer will be our estimation result. So why do we do assumptions? Why do we have to begin with uh, assumptions? The reason is the following. Suppose the the robot's location at any given time is depicted by x of t. So this is the, the location of the, 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 the robot. And this location is unknown to us. And there is no measurement on us that tells you with 100% accuracy where the robot is. So this is unknown to us. And in, 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 uh, in the estimation community, it is also known as a hidden variable. OK? It is not known, known to us, which is why we use different uh, measurement uh, systems to uh, approximate. The best estimation we have for, for this is x hat of t. We depict this, the, the best estimation, by x hat of t. OK? The best. the best estima estimation of x hat of t. And x hat of t is always a random variable. It's not a fixed quantity. Rather, it is a random variable. And this random variable, as we have seen uh, uh, previously, is best explained by its probability density function. or by, by its PDF. Our effort in any estimation assignment is to narrow as much as possible the, the, the width of this uh, PDF. For example, it may look like it may look like this one. So this width corresponds to the variance of the random variable. It corresponds to x hat square. The bigger the variance, the, 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 the bigger our uncertainty, and the less should be our confidence in x hat of t. So by the end of the day, one way of evaluating whether we have been successful in our estimation is to evaluate x hat of uh, this uh, sigma square of x hat of t, and we are going to see that one. So because now the random variable is hidden to us, we have to make certain assumptions to uh, proceed with the estimation uh, assignment. And I'm going to make four assumptions, uh, three of which are applicable almost for all type of estimation assignments, the fourth one applies only for linear estimation. It can apply for other estimations, but it is mandatory for linear uh, estimation uh, techniques. So assumptions. Uh, 
The first assumption is rather uh, simple. We believe that there is a reference system uh, which is useful for us to make comparison. Okay, we have we have a reference measurement okay usually this is a very expensive device uh, which is uh, we, we which we use uh, to make comparison only once or twice and then from now on, from then on, onwards we don't use the reference system but the other uh, reference the other uh, location system for our case or the other estimation uh, system. This reference system helps us to evaluate whether our uh, estimation assignment has been uh, successful. The second assignment or the second assumption we make is that the uh, the the, the uh, x of t here, the, the, the hidden variable, is somehow correlated with itself. To a certain extent, it's correlated with uh, itself. That means it's not a, an arbitrary function. The robot cannot be uh, at once here and then uh, uh, in another instance there. There is some correlation between its past, present, and future positions, okay? x of t is to a certain extent correlated okay with itself why do we say to a certain extent because we are not absolutely certain we, we say to a certain extent but it has to be correlated with itself. Otherwise, it is impossible to make any prediction. The basis for any prediction is that this autocorrelation uh, uh, behavior in the uh, random variable we are interested in. The third assumption we make is that the measurement also, to a certain extent, reflects the reality okay we believe that there is a certain correspondence between x of t and let's call x m of t. So this is measurement. This stands for measurement. So x of t corresponds with x m of t, but x m of t, of course, uh, includes or contains some, some error. The fourth assumption we make is that the three, for our case, the three different measurement systems, we have here the IMU-based inertial measurement unit, the uh, ultra-wideband-based, and the leather-based, they, we assume, are independent from one another. There are conditions when they may not be independent from one another, but for today, especially for linear estimation, we assume that they are independent. And we believe that this is a plausible uh, assumption because these are manufactured uh, at different uh, factories. Uh, and we could have picked any of the uh, measurement uh, devices and the deployment of these devices on the uh, mobile robot does not significantly affect their uh, statistical uh, dependence. So we assume that these three are statistically dependent. Okay, now based on these four assumptions, 
we are ready to begin to put in place the mathematical basis. Now let's say this one is S1, S2, let's say we have in general Sn independent sources. S stands here for sensors or for sources. Okay? And of course, if we do repeated measurements while the, the, the mobile robot was standing in one, uh, at one location, we may get different uh, values. As a result, we consider these n sources also as random variables, having their own distribution, their own variance. Okay, so these are These are random uh, variables having their own, as I told you, their own uh, distribution and their own uh, variance. And a while ago, I just said, regardless of how unreliable a measurement system could be, regardless of the, the error contained in the measurement, each measurement system is always useful. It brings certain addition into the, the estimation. So we never say that this measurement system is poor, so we don't uh, include it. I am going to show you why we do uh, uh, this. Now, If the random variables are independent, the joint density function, let's say P of S1, I drop now the, the, the index T because we are here concerned with the time T. So implicitly remember that we are talking about uh, time T, but for now I just drop that one. Not to have too many uh, indices. So the joint probability density function, because of independence, we can exp uh, assume that this is P of S1 times P of S2 times P of Sn. It's possible to, to describe the, the joint density function like this. And what does the, the joint density function say? What is the probability that S1 has observed one location, S2 has observed another location or that same location and Sn has observed the Sn location. So here you see that there is an n dimension possibility, okay? N, n dimension, the, the probability space here is an n dimension uh, uh, distribution. And we are interested in what is the probability that this, uh, the, the joint probability refers to one and the same uh, location. So to do this, for now, let's assume, this is the fourth assumption, uh, okay, the, the fifth assumption. Let's assume that all are this this sensors you see they are normally distributed let's say, a theta. And theta is, let's assume, the, the actual location of the, the robot in, in our lab, okay? So let's say this theta is the actual location.
Okay, that means x of t is theta, the actual location, which is hidden uh, from us. Now let's assume that these are normally distributed. That means we have S1, a probability density function, okay, S, which is 1 over 2 pi sigma, sigma 1, e minus S1 theta squared over 2 sigma 1 squared, and Sn has a probability density function which is okay suppose they have this normally distributed uh, 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 PDFs uh, to a certain extent it's plausible because uh, uh, early on I just showed you the uh, the uh, the density functions of our uh, three different uh, measurements okay so the 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 joint density function here can be explained as the the multiplication of this one so p of s1 s2 sn is now explained this has to be multiplied n times okay or uh, sorry powered n times so we can explain this 1 over 2 pi n over 2 because this is uh, half and this is n times now sigma okay another assumption J just let's simplify later oh we're going to relax but we, we for now we just assume that all of them have the same variance let's say say sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square is equal to sigma n square is equal to sigma sigma square for now let's just assume all measurement have the same uh, variance okay later on we're going to uh, relax this one it's not important but it will simplify uh, our derivation so that you can follow okay so this is n now here we have e because now the, the multiplication of the exponential results in in, ad, in addition like this one some i running from 1 up to n so here xi minus theta square over 2 sigma square so this is what we have this is the joint density function and we are interested in the parameter which results the highest probability. The parameter that results the highest probability here, we assume is where the robot is. Okay? The parameter theta resulting in the highest is assumed to be the best location of the robot in other uh, words the, the 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 highest probability is supposed to be our best estimation that means now we have to derivate this joint density function with respect to theta and set the result to zero and then the uh, the parameter we we get uh, this way is supposed to be the best estimation for the robot. So we can derivate this one, but as you can see, this derivation is rather will rather be nasty. What we can do is instead of uh, this one, we can also derivate 
the logarithm value because there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between this expression and its logarithmic expression. So derivating the logarithm is the same as derivating this one, but derivating the logarithm uh, value is uh, more simpler than the this one. So let's just derivate the logarithm function of this one. So the logarithm function of p of s1, s2, sn will be, so here you can see that there is multiplication. So we're going to change it to uh, um, addition with the logarithm. So this is ln. Let's just use the, the ln. Ln of this one. 1 over 2 pi to the power of n, sigma the power of n. So here plus, ln of e is always 1, but this is an exponent, so we can remove it. This is like mi minus sum of i running from 1 up to n, xi minus theta, the whole square, over 2 sigma square. This is what we get. Now we can derive it. This is uh, uh, Hans summer. If we differentiate this with respect to theta and set the result to zero, then that means uh, we have the, 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 the best estimation. Okay, now let's derive it. So if we differentiate L with respect to theta, this term, you see, is not a function of theta, so this is going to be 0. So what we have is only here. So here we have, because of the linearity relationship, we can put a theta, uh, so the d derivation uh, here. So this is like sum of the partial with respect to theta of xi minus theta squared over 2 sigma sigma square. We can describe it uh, like this. So this is equal to some irony from 1 up to n. So th this minus we have, but it's not really interesting because later on we're going to remove it to the other side. So here we have 2 xi minus theta over 2 sigma square. Now, because we are differentiating this with respect to theta here, it results in minus 1, the inner, the inner derivation. We can remove this minus 1, and we set this to 0 to get the, the optimum uh, probability, the, the optimum point. So this is going to, either it is multiplied uh, so that it results in 1, it doesn't matter. So what we have is, sum of xi minus theta, we can also remove this to the other side, is equal to 0. This is what we get. i running from 1 up to, 1 up to n. So now we can express this one, sum i running from 1 up to n xi is equal to n theta, because theta has to be added n times above. So from here we can say that the theta we, we estimated, which is a random variable, this theta is 1 over n, some i running from 1 up to n of xi's. Okay, so this is the, the foundation for the foundation for linear uh, estimation. Because here we have linear. Uh, this one over n term corresponds to the fact that we have assumed they have the same variance. Uh, as you can, uh, as you might see uh, uh, on top, okay. 
So we have assumed that they have the same variance. If they don't have the same variance, then we have to use the appropriate uh, uh, scaling uh, factors I'm going to show you uh, later on. But the summation term is the most important thing. The, the summation term, which refers to uh, linear uh, estimation, comes as a result of our assumption that they are normally distributed random variable. This assumption results from our, our assumption that the, uh, sorry, uh, okay, uh, I have been using xi instead of si. So wherever xi is described, please uh, remember that I meant to use si, okay? So assumptions that the SIs are normally distributed independent okay normally distributed uh, independent uh, random variable this is the the, the uh, basic assumption that results in, in this mixture. Now, after we have this expression, of course, we have to test whether this estimation is the best estimation. Uh, what uh, are our uh, uh, um, uh, references uh, to? The first is that we make sure that E of theta should result in the in theta remember theta is the actual location okay we have said theta is the actual location so the expected value of this the best estimator e theta hat should reflect the actual and then the other is that uh, sigma of theta hat should be smaller than all the the variances okay the variances of the independent the individual the individual random so we say it, it has to be minimum okay so we are now going to test this one so to begin with e of theta hat is E of, because theta hat is 1 over n, sum running from 1 up to n of si's. Okay, remember si is this one. So this, because of linearity again, uh, we can si. Because we said that each SI reflects, the mean of each SI reflects theta, it has to be uh, theta. So here we have n theta over n and theta. And this is the, the, actual, the actual location of the, the robot. So this is correct. Now the second is we have to evaluate the uh, the random uh, sorry the, the the variance of the e theta. At this point, it's worth to ask one question. Okay, observation. At any given time, if this is the robot, at any given time, the the, the robot should be uh, at, in one location. The robot cannot vibrate between multiple locations. We assume that the robot, the robot is stable and uh, is located uh, at one uh, position, okay? So that means theta is not a random 
Theta is not a random variable. So this is the, the, the first thing. But theta hat, our best estimator, is variable. Where does this come from? The reason is theta is a function of the observations. And the observations we have started by saying they are random variables. So by definition, a function of a random variable is always a random variable. OK? So a function of a random is always a random by definition. Okay, this is an important uh, observation. So to evaluate, one way of evaluating whether this random variable reflects theta is to examine its variance. Remember, uh, the, the, the confidence we associate with a random variable is always associated with the variance. The smaller the variance, the higher our confidence. The, 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 the larger the variance, the smaller should be our confidence. So there is always an inverse relationship between the variance and the confidence associated with that uh, random variable. So we're now going to uh, e uh, evaluate the variance of the, the, the best uh, estimator. OK, sigma square of theta hat is e theta hat minus theta. So this is the, the, the variance. So now we replace this with 1 over n sigma uh, si minus theta square. So this is the, the, the variance. Uh, this theta I can modify a little by just doing small uh, manipulation. Uh, this bracket is for this one, and this is for this one, and this for this one. Okay, so here we have, let's use a square bracket. Okay, so here we have one over n sigma si, i running from one up to n. Minus, I can write this as this one, because n over n is just 1. And this, again, I can write as minus 1 over n theta plus theta n times. And now this results in so we you can see I can write it like like this. So now I can combine the, the, the summations or I can unify and simplify. So 1 over n is a common for both. I run it from 1 up to n of si minus theta. I can write it like this. 
Now the good thing about this one is if I uh, square this uh, summation, this result n times the square of this term. Now this the inner term, the n times the square. Okay, uh, to explain. Remember that the square of this, if this is i running from 1 up to n, results in summation of i running from 1 up to n of xi square plus two summations, i running from 1 up to n, j running from 1 up to n, and j different from i, xi, xj. This is how you can uh, re uh, uh, rewrite this, this summation. For our case, this, the inner term is now not xi, but si minus theta. So for, for our case, we have for this one, I running from 1 up to n of si minus theta, the whole square, plus some i running from 1 up to n, j running from 1 up to n, but i and j are different. So we have here si minus theta, sj minus theta. Okay? Remember, because of the independence assumption, this term is 0. Si and Sj are not correlated. So this term is 0 because of independent assumption. This one you can see is sigma i square, which we say is sigma square. For our case, we assuming that all of them have the same variance. This is not a strict uh, assumption, but uh, for now we can, we can assume. And this one here, we have to remove from, from, the, uh, from the summation, so this is 1 over n squared. We, we mustn't forget here, okay, 1 over n squared. So what we have is here, 1 over n squared, summation i running from 1 up to n of sigma squared, the variance of the independent, the independent random variables. So sigma square, because the summation contains n, we have here n sigma square over n square. This is sigma square over n. So you can see that we now cut our uncertainty by n. That means the, the PDF is really narrow. Now the limit, as n approach to infinity of sigma square n is 0. This is how we approach the, the, the actual value, but never touch it, uh, never touch it because uh, this is a theoretical, uh, a theoretical limit. So what we have is theoretically the following. So earlier I showed you three PDFs. Okay. So we have one red. One instead of green, I will take a yellow, and one maybe white. Range. Now suppose, look, so one of them looks like here. For, for our case, we, we assume that the, the, the variants were uh, all the same, but suppose the, the variants were not, not the same. And suppose we have, okay, and then another
Okay, it looked like this one. Now the result we, we get are the result will be so this is theta hat. Okay, let's say this is S1, this S2, and this S3. So the best estimator has always the narrowest, the narrowest width. Okay. The best for our case, the linear has the PDF, and our confidence in it should be the the highest uh, we can we can give. Okay. So by this we come to the, the conclusion of today's lecture. Today we considered uh, the basis for uh, linear estimation. Uh, we considered the case where the, 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 the sources are statistically speaking uh, independent from one another. Uh, we considered the special case of the sources having uh, a, a normal distribution, uh, an independent normal uh, distribution as a result of these assumptions, uh, we can combine them uh, linearly. Uh, next time, we're going to consider the case for uh, nonlinear uh, uh, estimation and uh, some of the underlying uh, assumptions. Uh, thank you for, for your uh, attendance. If you have any questions, you are welcome. No question. Okay, goodbye from my side.